Hi everyone, I hope you can all hear me. I think headphones on if you, if you can't. Um, thanks so much for coming today to hear me talk about my passion, marketing automation. And um, before I dive into all of the great stuff, I know you're really desperate to hear about the you know, content automation, personalization, automated con content personalization. I thought I'd spend a, just a minute or two just explaining who I am and why I think I can stand here for 20 minutes and hopefully sound like I know what I'm talking about. So my name's Sam Lewis-Williams. I'm head of, you guessed it, marketing automation at the Financial Times. And um, I've spent most of my working life in publishing. I was previously at The Economist for a few years where my job was to basically use content to try to get those subscribers to The Economist to stay at the end of their subscription. But now I'm working at the Financial Times, um, which if you don't know, it's a daily paper published in broadsheet and digitally. We focus mainly on business, economics, current affairs, that sort of thing. Um, if you're not sure, we are the only paper in your local Tesco that is published on pink paper. And actually, it's 130 years this year since the FT turned pink, and I know our brand team would love us to talk about that, so hashtag fearlessly pink. Um, I mentioned, of course, that our journalistic focus is mainly business and economics, but we actually have a diverse range of content from uh, life and arts, fashion, food and drink. There's the FT Weekend, which is published every Saturday, which focuses on those things particularly, as well as our weekly supplement, How to Spend It, which you may have also heard of. Um, our main revenue, like most other you know, media um, print companies, comes from uh, our ads, but also really from our paying subscribers and the content that they choose to interact with. So our marketing automation team sits within the area that's responsible for managing the relationship with our subscribers. I use the word relationship very, very intentionally because we're all about being more than just subscription management. And while subscription management is obviously incredibly vital, what we, are, we see ourselves as more of the guides to how the FT fits into someone's daily life. How can we make sure that you know, they're, they're using the tools and features, including in their subscription, to be able to have the conversations that they want to be having in their, in their work life, in their personal life? How can we make sure that when they have free time, they're spending it with us and not, say, Netflix? Sorry, Netflix. Within that, my team is the marketing automation team, and we are the executioners of all of that. So our job is to use our platform, Bloomreach, which is our marketing automation platform, essentially to bring that relationship to life. It's our job to take the strategies, the insights, and the hypotheses about our subscriber base and turn those into omni-channel, orchestrated experiences that ultimately aim to increase habit, engagement, and hopefully reduce churn. So it won't surprise anyone here, I hope, that there's a, a correlation, and we know there's a correlation between habit engagement and someone's reduced likelihood to churn. And we also know that our content and the diversity of our content is kind of the key way to engage our subscribers. And so with all of that in mind, I wanted to use the, the next 15 minutes or so to talk about how we use our data, use our platform to make sure we're getting the right content in front of the right subscribers at the right time to manage habit engagement and churn and really think about how we create those one-to-one -one personalized relationships with our subscribers and their subscription with the FT. So to set the scene, here's our challenge. The Insights team has let us know this fact Essentially, subscribers who visit FT.com twice weekly at least are about 20% less likely to churn. So that's great. That's really interesting. We can do something with that. We know from our previous campaigns and tests and learnings that we've run that our personalized content is the way to drive people to site. So we know we want to get people to site twice a week, more than twice a week, using the articles published on FT.com. Fantastic. So. We're probably thinking something like an email campaign sent, well, twice a week, I guess, to subscribers who are reading less than twice a week, and with a nice selection of, I don't know, five or six articles that will drive them to site and make them read. Okay, let's do that. But here is where the fun begins. In selecting our content, we have over 700 journalists based around 40 countries in the world who are publishing, not writing, publishing on average 630 articles per week. We also have at least 10 podcasts, which some of them have weekly episodes, some are recorded daily, which means we end up with about 14 total weekly episodes, which, very quick maths, results in around 20 hours worth of content per week. We also have around 50 newsletters, and that's growing all the time. Those are also a mixture of daily uh, editions as well as weekly editions. And actually, 
What that means is we could be getting up to sort of 10 newsletters a day that we have to select from to put in front of our subscribers. We also have different products with different levels of access to all of this content. So we have premium subscribers who have premium access. That's essentially unlimited access to FT.com. But we also have standard subscribers who it's really great access, but there are a few things they can't quite see. You're also able to subscribe directly to individual newsletters, so we have to bear that in mind. We also have a light app called The Edit, which has about eight articles that someone can access per day. So we've got to think about that as well. Our subscribers are global. We're a global paper. Um, they work across multiple different industries. They range from CEOs who've been with us for years who use us to make you know, really important business decisions to a wide-eyed student who's been told by his economics professor that he absolutely has to subscribe to the FT and he has no idea what to do with that information. It's going to be very, very difficult to capture all of those different needs and wants within one campaign with all of that content. And we have uh, over 300,000 of them to worry about. That's just B2C subscribers. I think there was a study recently by McKinsey that said something along the lines of 70% of customers expect personalized communications from brands that they interact with. So, okay, maybe we only need to worry about 210,000 of them, but that's still an awful lot of work for me and my team to build emails that make sure that someone who really just wants some restaurant recommendations doesn't get a huge complex long read about tech and stocks in their inbox on a Monday morning. And actually, while we're thinking about the plan, do we, do we know the right day of week we should be sending this campaign? Because the person who wants those restaurant recommendations might not want a list of recommended wines to read in their inbox at 8 a.m. on their commute. I mean, maybe they do. There's no judgment. But OK, that's fine. So let's, let's push it later in the day, uh, maybe even change the day of the week to a Saturday afternoon. But then the person who wants the tech article isn't going to be desperate to read about SoftBank backing a new stock over their 4 p.m. glass of wine on a Saturday afternoon. I mean. Maybe they might, just because I would be on TikTok at that time doesn't mean everyone else would be. Oh, and hang on, I said omni-channel earlier, didn't I? So is email even the right channel for us to be thinking about? Possibly not. We are able through Bloomreach to serve on-site messages on ft.com, so we, we need to think about if that's the right channel. But we also have an app, so should we be using push notifications at that point? And actually, on top of that, we also have a great customer care team who often do outbound calls to our subscribers recommending how they set up their subscription and different content to read. So maybe we also think need to think about using outbound call as its own channel. And basically, what I'm trying to say is that it would be impossible for our team to manually put together and curate emails that are personalized enough for all of these different customers who have all of these different needs from, from the FT. So, what do we do? How can we automate our content, but also make sure it's content that people actually want to read? Well, big surprise, it's data, which is probably the answer you expected. We collect and collate so much data about our customers at the FT, and we think about it in two different ways. We have our customer attributes and our customer events. Attributes is it's demographic data. It's stuff that has one answer, and it's the stuff that people tell us. When I say one answer, I mean someone can be based in APAC and they move to the US, but they can only be in one place at one time. And when someone signs up to a subscription or becomes a registered user, we make them fill in a form that tells us all of this stuff, their region, their industry, their title, their position, that basically gives us a very generalized idea of who this person is. But that's just what they tell us. We c try to complement that with our tracked data, which is our, com which is our customer events. These are things we're tracking and following across our website, across our campaign, across our app. And these things can have multiple answers and multiple layers of information within them. For example, someone could be signing up to a newsletter whilst unsigning up from one they were, in uh, they were reading before, whilst also trialing a new one. And we're also capturing the time of day that they're doing it. We're capturing um, you know, uh, the different topics within that that they're potentially engaging with. And that allows us to layer that on top of our tech CEO based in London and tell us a bit more about who they are and what they're reading. And for me, that's the kind of first key step in unlocking what content people actually want to read and that's not relying on what people tell you they want. Prime example, I love BBC Good Food. I'm a really, really loyal subscriber and every single time they ask me what I want to hear from them, I tell them, you know what, 
I want to learn about healthy meal prep. I want to make sure I'm, you know, fed and fueled for the week ahead, and I want to be really healthy and organized. But if you look at my uh, reading history, it's mostly cake. And realistically, if they're going to put an email in front of me, I'm going to click on the cake one, despite telling them that that's what I want. If we bring that back to the FT, um, and we think about what our readers' habits mean about them, when people sign up, they subscribe for our superb business and economics content. But actually, if you look at our website visits on a Thursday, when our life and art content is published, we get a huge spike. And columns like Globetrotter, which is a really, really great, would highly recommend city break type column, has a huge readership. So actually, that person who thinks they just want tech content, tech premium columns and tech newsletters is actually probably using us just as much to plan their weekend and may not even realize it. So what do we do with all of that information? We can't believe people when they tell us who they are. So, nope, sorry, skip the slide. We think about data science and how we use that. We work very, very closely with our data science team. I think if you ask them, they would probably tell you that we are constantly bugging them for new things for them to build. Um, and I think if you ask us, we would say we're constantly giving them new opportunities to challenge themselves because we love a data science model to do the heavy lifting for us. We use our data science models to answer particular customer questions or address particular challenges. Some examples, our next best action model, one of my favorites. Um, basically, we figure out what is the next best thing for one of our subscribers to be doing, whether that's reading weekend content, whether that's signing up to a newsletter, reading a topic, reading a particular journalist, following us on a social media channel. That data point will appear in the customer's profile on Bloomreach, and we can use that to segment and target, but also personalize any communications that they get. We also have other things predicted to churn. That's what it says on the tin. We figure out if a subscriber is looking like they might be about to cancel. Predicted to disengage is the step before that. We look at people who are currently engaged and we think about all the behavior that might indicate they might be dropping off the cliff a little bit. And finally, we have clustering models, which we can apply across our, our whole life cycle. They're glorified customer profiles, but again, they're a data point within Bloomreach that allows us to say, well, if someone falls, if someone's a new trialist and they fall into cluster four, we know they're X percent likely to finish their trial and they're X percent unlikely to do this during the course of their trial. And so we can address that with the communications that we put in front of them at that point. So once we've kind of got all our data together, we start getting really, really organized. We have to, we still have to figure out what four or five articles of the 630 we have to get in front of those individual 300,000 subscribers. So we think about three things, segmentations, triggers, and content alignment. So starting with segmentations, we use our platform, Bloomreach, uh, to basically collect and manage the data for us. In this instance, we might think about, say, the top 10 things that we want to understand about the customers who are most likely to get this campaign and we'll make sure that those things we're looking at are a mixture of those events and those attributes so that we get that holistic picture of a subscriber. We might think about things like whether or not they've commented on an article, their job title, their region, but also things like when was the last time they opened a newsletter? When is the best time for them to receive an email from us? Is there a particular journalist um, or topic that they really, really, really love to follow? And then we can, within Bloomreach, layer those segmentations on top of each other and create numerous customer profiles that allow us to be super, super personalized in terms of who we're picking up and when. So then we start thinking about when we trigger stuff. So let's think back to our original challenge. I said twice weekly, right, for a campaign, but actually that's just how often we need to get people to site. That's not necessarily how many emails need to arrive in their inbox every week, right? So instead, um, what we'll think about is what are the moments in their life, their daily life with the FT, where we can jump in with something that will get them to come to site. So we probably started with something like this, where we'll have an email that gets sent on a Monday, sends them a nice content around us, and then we'll go, okay, well, then later on in the week, we're maybe not sure what the best day is to send some weekendy content to drive them to site. So we, we might do an A-B test between like a Thursday or a Saturday send. Um, but actually, if someone, say, is already visiting once a week, it's not that much of a push to get them to visit twice a week compared to someone who's only visiting monthly. And so this, again, isn't gonna work for everyone. What we're trying to do is not guess the best day of the week to send a communication. We wanna make sure we're actually hitting the customer at the point where it's going to be impactful and hit them ideally on the channel where they are most likely to then engage with that content. 
So we'll think about things like this. Maybe someone has just flipped from visiting twice weekly to only weekly now, and we can jump in at that point. Maybe someone is on site right now, and they're organically signing up themselves to a newsletter or following a topic. So that would be a really, really great time to target them with a com while they're still warm and active and doing something on ft.com. Finally, maybe someone called customer care with a question about the app. Maybe they're asking how to download it or how to do something specific in there. So if we know they've had that phone call, maybe that's the time to jump in and say, oh, well, maybe you want to know a little bit more about the app, right? So if we've got an idea of when we want to jump into people's lives when we talk to them, we also then need to start thinking about what content we align with all of those different areas. And this is where, after all that, I am going to cheat a little. So I mentioned our data science team and uh, all the great models they build for us. And we also have a really, really great model ca called our depth versus breadth of reading model. Essentially what that does is it figures out whether someone should be kept on reading the same content or the same topic that they're already engaging with because actually they really like that topic, it's going to keep them engaged, and if they keep reading just finance, that's going to be fine, and they'll keep renewing, fantastic, versus someone who is maybe reading just a really, really niche article about a particular US company, and actually we need to make sure that they're introduced to maybe some tech, maybe some life and arts, maybe a podcast that's about world affairs, just to diversify their reading a little bit, increase that breadth, and get them engaged that way, rather. But then we have to get that content into our emails. So we use an internal tool called a content feed builder. This is what it looks like. Um, essentially what we do is we create these what we call content feeds on the right hand side that can be anything from a selection of world headlines, focus on a particular journalist, top 10 list of what people are reading, and we can build them ourselves with really, really simple queries that you can see in the middle. And each of those links out to something that looks like this, which is in the tool. And so what it produces for us is everything about that article that we can select and put into our emails. So the image, the stand first, the, the journalist, the date published, we can pick and choose what we want. I mean, we, we always include the title because people want to know what they're reading. But what we can then do is bundle all of that up and throw that into our campaign canvas, into something that is called a webhook that then flows into the email. And if we compile that with those breadth and depth and next best action models, we can be pretty confident that the article the subscriber is seeing on the other end is going to be super personalized for them. Essentially, we let all the data science and the automation do the heavy lifting for us. So let's look back at our examples from earlier, because now we have the beginnings of a plan. That person who's just slipped from visiting twice weekly to weekly, now we can jump in with an email that we fill with those segmentations and those models, and we can determine what articles to show them. So that's it, job done. But the person who signed up for a newsletter or followed a topic, actually, if we want to meet them where they are with something that's relevant for them, that's now starting to feel more like maybe an on-site message because we can point them at the journalist that they've just, uh, who writes the newsletter that they've just followed and make sure that they remind them to follow that writer and that will start bringing them to site organically too. And finally, that person who just called customer care to ask a question about the app, well, that now seems like a push notification because if they're on the app and they're using it, we can meet them where they are, where they've just asked the question about, and again, complement that with our reading models and our content feed builder to make sure that what, they, what we recommend to them at that point is the most impactful uh, article that they'll see. Overall that though, we need to make sure we're testing and learning because we don't know if it's actually working until we start building it. I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, but while obviously we'll be looking at things like our open rates and our click-through rates and our overall impressions, really what we're trying to figure out is are subscribers who are visiting ft.com twice a week actually less likely to churn? And are we achieving our goal in driving people to site twice a week? Um, there's a lot there and there's a lot for us to start working on, so it's time to figure out how we actually make it happen. Because the truth is if we tried to build all of that, plan all of the possible customer journeys out on a massive whiteboard or a lucid chart, which we do try to do, that's going to take us six weeks to build, six weeks to, to create, and then we're six weeks away before we actually start to get an idea of, is it working? And so we start small. We figure out who those low-hanging fruit audience is. We, we figure out, you know, are the people who are visiting once a week more likely to be able to jump up to twice a week versus that person who's only visiting monthly. We start off with the channels that are easier to set up and the areas that are easier or have easier hypotheses to validate so that we can, I've only got five minutes left, sorry, I will speed up. 
um, so that we can make sure, basically, that we know what's working. And at the end of six weeks, what we end up with is something that looks a bit more like this, which is a spider web of different campaigns and experiences across the whole of Bloomreach that ultimately we can then say with a lot of confidence are driving people to site and are doing the jobs that they're meant to do. I'm gonna finish this off very quickly though by saying that sometimes you also just need to know when to stop. Key example, last year the Queen died and uh, we had to jump in very, very quickly and stop those automations and stop all of the data science and the models and stuff that was choosing articles for us because as much as we pride ourselves on our content or our emails and our comms feeling really personal and like they're written by a real person, some news events, and that's what we as a team are constantly reacting to, are not always appropriate to use something that the commuter is choosing for you. And half of our job is knowing when that time is and knowing when to stop. But also, I guess, knowing when to pick back up again and press play. So that is the end. Um, I think there's opportunity for questions now, but also I will be around if anyone wants to come and ask something separately. Thank you very much.